Hello, hello. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Alexandra, and today I will moderate the webinar for you guys. So I see people already signing in. Uh, if you wish, please introduce yourself in the comments. Tell us where you're from. That's always nice to know. Uh, so today we're very glad uh, that you took the time and have joined us for the webinar. Our webinar, Standardization and Optimization of Global AR Invoicing at Achfa Hevert. So uh, to start off, uh, I will maybe introduce our speakers. First off, I don't know if it's on my right or on my left, but maybe he will wave. We have uh, Nick van den Berg. Hello, Nick. Um, E-invoicing consultant at uh, Comar. And uh, he will talk about the actual uh, process and steps necessary for the delivery of such a project. And he will also touch on some important technical aspects as well as uh, standards and legal framework. Then on the other side, uh, we have our dear guest speaker, uh, Peter Delen, uh, Finance Manager Europe at Achva Hevert. And Peter uh, will share his side of the story. So um, how the need for the project actually came about and what main challenges and complexities were experienced uh, from Achva's side. So uh, then for the agenda of the webinar, so you know what we're going to talk about. Uh, first, Peter will introduce uh, Achfa uh, as a company. Then Nick will introduce uh, Comark. And also for those who are not yet familiar uh, with basic invoicing concepts, uh, Nick will give a short explanation about that. And then we will move on to uh, our main subject, so the Achfa and Comark uh, business case. Uh, now, during the webinar, feel free uh, to ask questions. Our speakers will very gladly uh, answer them during or at the end of the webinar. Uh, if you see a question that uh, someone else asked that also interests you, don't hesitate to upvote it. You can do that by clicking uh, on a button with an arrow. Then we will see that a lot of people are interested and we will uh, definitely pr prioritize uh, the question. Uh, we will do our best to answer everything live. However, if um, we are super popular and that doesn't happen, we will uh, send you a quick email after the webinar and we'll be sure to answer your question. Uh, also, we will have a couple of uh, polls. For this, uh, feel free to explore the right panel and uh, do give us our, your opinion. We're very interested. Also, should your kids or pets uh, or other elements at home uh, distract you during the webinar? No worries at all. Feel free to devote your entire attention to them because we will record the webinar and we'll drop you a quick mail just after the webinar and um, with, with a link to the, to the recording. So um, also in this email, we will have uh, the PowerPoint from the webinar, our contact details. So stay tuned for that. Uh, I'm going to end there, uh, so sit back and relax. We hope you enjoy. And now I will leave uh, the floor to Peter. Okay, thank you. And also thank you, Komar, for being able to uh, present Achva as a company and the project uh, we embarked on now. Um, I think a lot of people will know uh, or remem remember at least the brand Achva uh, from the old consumer imaging film rolls. Uh, for more than 150 years, meanwhile, the group has been active in uh, the imaging as a, a, a big word. Now, today, the Echva Gevaert Group, with uh, his uh, headquarters in Belgium, in Morsel, is still active in the uh, development, manufacturing and distribution of analog and digital systems, as well as in uh, IT solutions. Uh, this is mainly done for the printing industry and the healthcare sector, but also for specific industrial applications. The turnover of our turnover generated in, is mainly generated in B2B markets, but the company contributes to uh, everybody's everyday life. Uh, for example, when you read a newspaper or when you visit a hospital, uh, the Achva Gevaert group is uh, closely involved. 
Now the group strives to be the partner of choice in all the market, uh, markets in which it operates. Uh, and our understanding of the market and business and the individual needs of our customers allows us to offer uh, leading edge technology and affordable solutions and innovative ways of working. Now, uh, the group has a divisional structure, which is built around solutions, as you can see. Solutions in offset printing, newspaper, magazines, packaging, also inkjet printing for the printing industries, but not to forget radiology imaging, digital direct computed x-ray, and IT solutions for healthcare sector. And last but not least, based on, on, on the big history the company has, as well as the experiences, we also offer what we call derived and connected industrial solutions like printed electronics and circuit boards, synthetic, uh, synthetic paper, membranes, security cards, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, in 2019, the company generated a turnover of around 2.2 billion euro and uh, around 10,000 employees are uh, employed worldwide. So that's a little bit in a nutshell, uh, the Agfa Gevaert group. Um, and I'm happy to let also uh, Nick introduce Komarg uh, to have the full picture of this webinar. Thanks a lot for the uh, introduction about Agfa and also thank, uh, thank you for uh, joining us today. Um, I will explain just a bit about Comark. Um, we are founded in uh, we were founded in 1993 by uh, the prof uh, one of the professors of the IT University of Krakow, um, who is currently still the uh, still the founder, uh, still the CEO of Comark. Uh, currently, we have over 6,000 employees and we have a global presence worldwide. Um, most of our solutions are self uh, are, are self developed. Uh, around 93% of our revenue comes from sales of our own software and products. Um, also, if you look at the business unit that I am um, that I am <clears throat> in and responsible for for the Benelux market, uh, our business unit has four main product groups. Um, one of them, which is master data management, the other one that is EDI, online distribution, and of course the star of today, e-invoicing. Um, just to give you like a global view or like a, a quick view of of um, where we are present, um, we have clients and projects worldwide. Um, such as Metro, where we have a project in EDI in around um, 24 countries, but also like ACFA, where we have um, e-invoicing in 44 countries. We have Unilever, uh, British Patrol, Nestle, et cetera. So a couple of big brands that we, that we do e-invoicing or EDI for or master data management. Um, now I will go, go over to just to give you like a very quick introduction about e-invoicing. Um, if you're not familiar with e-invoicing, electronic invoicing is basically the exchange of the invoice document between uh, a supplier and its buyer in an electronic format. Now, some people think that an electronic format also includes a PDF file, but actually this is not true. A PDF is not an electronic format. If we look at an electronic format, this, uh, this means uh, an XML file or an EDI file that can automatically be, um, be recognized by an ERP system um, and it, there's almost no manual labor involved. Um, there, in general, in the world at this moment, there are two global approaches to electronic invoices. One is the post audit approach, and one is the clearance approach. Uh, the post audit, which is very common in US, Canada, uh, in the European Union, where basically you have to store your invoices up to a certain amount of time. And, um, and then the more interesting approach when it comes to e-invoicing and implement and why we see more implementations of e-invoicing worldwide is the clearance approach, where a country actually makes it mandatory for you to exchange invoices, and these invoices have to go to the tax authority first. Uh, they will approve these invoices, and uh, either such as in Italy, which is uh, which has a clearance approach, Italy will. Uh, automatically um, send the invoice to your buyer. So you don't even have to send the invoice anymore to your buyer. You just send it to the tax authority and they will send it to your buyer. Um, if we look at the, uh, the national trends, um, the post audit model, as I said, is usually is mostly in Canada, European Union countries. And we see the clearance approach in, mostly in Latin American countries, uh, Turkey, Russia, Asia, um, et cetera. Um, from these two models that I've just explained is actually one of the uh, one of the main reasons uh, Aqua has started up their project. 
And um, that is why I directly want to switch to the business case. Uh, of course, all of you are here to hear more about the business case. So we will go over to the business case right now. Um, Peter, can you explain a bit more why Aqua started up an e-invoicing project? I mean, we started uh, the project with you guys in January 2019, but we've been talking about it since the summer 2018. What happened before the summer 2018 when you made the decision to uh, set up such a project? Um, well, as we are, I, I mentioned in the introduction of the group that we are present in, in we have a worldwide presence. So, um, and in, in, in that's uh, due to the fact we were operational in different countries, we are exposed automatically to, to a lot of compliance in terms of invoicing. And more and more, this compliance becomes digital. Uh, and we, we learned rather fast that we would not be able with our own resources and our own systems to deal and to, to, to remain compliant in all the different countries we are active. Um, so we were looking for, for solutions and also one of the strategic choices was not to uh, look for different partners across the world, but to look for one partner uh, who was able to support us in terms of e-invoicing uh, on a worldwide uh, level. Hence the, uh, the start of, of the e-invoicing project within, uh, within Agfa. Yeah, thanks a lot for your answer. And this directly links to one of the polls that we actually want to publish. Um, which uh, I'm curious about. And, um, and this one is, uh, what are the key drives for e-invoicing adoption in your company um, from the audience perspective? If you don't, uh, if you're not um, currently working on e-invoicing in your company, but you're, for example, a consultant that does, that does consulting for e-invoicing, please feel free to answer the poll in which cases you see uh, uh, most of the time happening when you consult companies in, 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 on e-invoicing. Um, Peter, you mentioned that you uh, you wanted one global vendor. Can you can you explain a bit more about uh, how you started up uh, the process um, to set up an e-invoicing project for accounts receivable um, and looking for those global vendors? Yeah, of course. Well, we 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 have set up first of all internally what we call a multidisciplinary project team, in which uh, finance but also customer operations, uh, purchasing, and ICS participated. And, and that project team uh, made up an RFP in which we explained uh, the complexity of our company, uh, also in terms of systems that, that we are using. Uh, that RFP was sent out to different suppliers, uh, and those suppliers had the opportunity first to present their solution. Based on that first presentation, uh, internally we, we made a shortlist of uh, three vendors and those vendors had the opportunity to uh, give a more detailed presentation, including a demo on their solution for e-invoicing within our company. Now, it is most probably not a surprise uh, that at the end uh, we selected Comarch as uh, our preferred partner, otherwise I would most probably not be sitting here. Uh, but they convinced us during the demo that they were able to connect to different systems, uh, that they were present uh, on a global level, and also that there was a kind of advisory role foreseen uh, going forward, because we do not know exactly what is going to happen in the near future in Europe or even in other geographies. And therefore, we also count on the uh, Comarch uh, advisory role to help us in a proactive way to be ready to embark other countries uh, or to shift our planning. I hope, Nick, that this more or less is answering the question. Yeah, thanks a lot for the for the kind words about Comark. Uh, that's very nice to hear. Um, from my perspective, you, you've talked you talked a bit about the complexity of your project. Uh, choosing one global vendor, um, I, we will immediate, immediately go to a, to a second poll where um, I actually want to see the strategy of other companies as well. Because what I can see in my in my day to day job is that either people are uh, we, we have projects with with such as Aqua where we are handling. Um, um, 44 countries for one specific uh, co uh, company, but it can also happen that companies just approach us 
for one specific company, like for Italy or for India or for uh, the Netherlands or for Benelux or only for Europe. Um, what I'm curious about from the audience perspective is how do you, what kind of strategy do you have when it comes to invoicing adoption? Um, like, do you choose one global vendor or do you, do you go for a local vendor? And um, Peter, for you, the next question um, is the complexity of the project, the scope, you've talked about it, you've explained it a bit, but what is the actual scope of the project? Can you maybe elaborate a bit more on that? Well, yeah, in, in, in total, we talk about around 100 countries eh, where we are active in and different uh, IT systems. And um, it is impossible to do it all at once. So uh, the, the first scope, scope of phase one, is uh, Europe as a geography, where we also focused out of the four business units we have that uh, three will join the, the e-invoicing project because these three divisions are uh, using our main SAP backbone system and that is then easier uh, as a project to, to coordinate. Uh, for these two main SAP platforms, we are setting up the connection with, with Comarch, country by country. And uh, with Comarch, we decided to activate uh, the tracking tool, which allows us centrally to follow on, on where we are with e-invoices uh, in, in terms of delivery to this customer. But also on top, we decided to activate the customer portal uh, via which, which is the, which is the channel um, via which we deliver our invoices towards our customers in a PDF format or XML or any other connection the customer wants to, uh, to activate uh, to get our invoices uh, on time and without paper. Yes, thanks a lot of telling a bit more about the scope. It sounds it sounds quite an extensive startup from, from ACFA's side, um, but also from Comarch's side, of course, implementing a solution in, in plus 40 countries over three different business units, working with different, different people from business units. Um, um, we do this uh, from a day-to-day -day job. Like we have, we have, we have multiple projects in e-invoicing, but how is it as a company like ACFA to set up such, such a program? Like how, how, how do you do that? Where, where does that come from? Well, we, uh... We set up an, 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 a steering committee. Uh, that was a, a first decision. We needed a steering committee. And not unimportant to mention is that in that steering committee also Comar participates so that we have direct contact on the, the progress or the problems, but also the successes uh, within, within the, the, the process as we move on. Uh, below that steering committee, there is uh, a focus on, on, on transactional systems. Uh, as they both, and also the divisions that's key of, of, of uh, connected with the different divisions, they all have their, their own specifics in terms of customer needs and, and, and the way the system is set up. So the project is, has, has two pillars, the two main SAP platforms, uh, which is coordinated by a steering committee, again, in which um, Comarg is, is participating. And also, I must say that this helped us to easily gear up the project and is now helping us to plan uh, as we move on the next steps. Uh, but that is something we will most probably tackle in, in the rest of this webinar. Yeah. Yeah. It's one thing that, that we can see definitely works in this project is that we have these, these moments uh, every month, every two months where we all come together, all three business units from Aqua, uh, the project manager from Comark, uh, the consultants from Comark, uh, sometimes the BU director from uh, the business unit director from our side, to just discuss the project, see where we're going and see what, where we can tackle the issues. Um, this has also led to some results uh, and uh, of the project. And um, can you tell us a bit more, Peter, about where we are right now with the project and what the current results are? Uh, yes, of course. Um, we started in the beginning uh, under pressure, I must say, with uh, Italy, uh, where new uh, legislation forced us to uh, move to uh, e-invoicing for our Italian customers. Uh, and that was for us uh, the, a little bit of proof of concept. Eh? So we had not much time to, to really think about all the, the, the different aspects of a project, but we managed to get the Italian invoicing live in, I think, two months, which was, which was great. 
meanwhile, also uh, Portugal, which is a smaller country in terms of business for us, we managed to bring Portugal live via the portal. And then we started to look at, at France, which is a, a bigger market for us and also uh, uh, yeah, from, a, from a country size point of view, bigger than, than some other countries. Um, so that's where we where we are right now. France is also meanwhile live. We are in the in the startup uh, there, so the project has not yet ended. Uh, the whole uh, Corona uh, situation was not very uh, the best thing to happen uh, for this project, neither. So we we are still in project mode there, uh, but we hope to to work on next countries soon to start working on that so that we can roll in more countries to come. Although we know that due to the experience we, we have right now with Italy, with Portugal and with Spain, uh, we expect to be able to speed up the, the go life for the other countries uh, more and better than that we had in the past due to the fact that we had to learn on, on what is needed, what do we need to do and um, okay, what, what, uh, what, is, what is expected from our customers. Yeah, thanks for that. You, you've, you've already talked a bit about lessons learned. One of them was, of course, onboarding of business partners. Um, and, and, and you've already talked about the France, we, we are, uh, France uh, scope. We are going live. We are in implementation. The coronavirus, of course, has hit everybody um, that is listening to this webinar. And um, we can also see that a bit in the setup of the program, setup, setup of the project. Could you, uh, could you explain a bit more about the onboarding difficulties that we've had in France? And um, also the, the lessons learned uh, behind those? Yeah, yeah, of course. I, first of all, the lessons learned also for me personally was that uh, in the beginning we had a very ambitious planning. Yeah? So we, we truly believed that uh, in one, max two years time, we would be able to, uh, to, to get on board all the, the countries in Europe and uh, that we were ready for the future. Now, a lot of things are happening uh, internally, but also externally. Uh, which makes you decide to do things differently as we move on. Again, the Steerco is helping us there to get to an agreement uh, in order to make then a new planning, which is having a better view on the future. The planning is now what we call more short term rather than, than long term. Uh, we focus on a three months window and we try to work country by country and not try to do everything at once because that is definitely not helping. Now, one of the, the biggest lessons learned is, it, is on the onboarding, like you mentioned, uh, Nick. The onboarding in France um, was difficult. Um, and uh, we learned that we need to, to work more upfront in getting contact with the customers to inform them on what is going to happen. And also we realized that in today's world, uh, digitalization also has an, an, an negative sound sometimes and people think sometimes in terms of fraud and, and, and malicious swear, uh, emails. So it is uh, we, the lessons we learned is, is clearly that we need to, uh, to uh, inform our customers up front to uh, make sure that the majority of customers are onboarded prior to the real go live. And then you have a, a smoother go live rather than going live onboarding uh, at the same time because then you end up in, in a kind of a vicious circle and it's very difficult to, to break it. And, and then, on, like I mentioned, the, the COVID crisis was then not helping uh, because a lot of customers has now have now other priorities than clicking on a link to uh, get uh, access to a portal. Yeah. Yeah, so from, from the, of course, we have, we, as Comark, we also have our lessons learned that, that, that Informing the business partners is definitely something that that we should, uh, or in the next steps together with Aqua, should should pay more attention to involving account managers from different countries. Do you think it's 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 difficult because you're working in a on a project in forty in, in plus forty countries as well? That there is also a cultural aspect to these uh, to 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 the rollouts. Well, I I, I think so. Uh, you you see the sensitivity of of languages. Uh, you see also the, the sensitivity of uh, approaching customers via email, especially in a business where you have a close customer contact. So, so uh, customers expect a certain certain service level and with an e-invoicing program, they, they sometimes think that 
that we are uh, reducing the service levels, which is definitely not true. On the contrary, we are even giving them more opportunities uh, to work together. Uh, the cultural thing, I think the majority is connected with, with legislation also. Uh, compare Italy with, with France. Uh, in Italy, the, the law was clearly stipulating as from January 1st, 2019, we will move to e-invoicing, whether you like it or not. And in one, two months time, I must say this, this worked quite well, also from, from a, a governmental platform point of view. Where in France, yeah, it, it, it's more uh, still the, the, the paperwork, what is expected. And then changing all of them towards an e-invoicing, because also that's important to know. We wanted to, to approach our customers, all of them in the same way. Yeah, it makes it then difficult to, uh, to get to, to the right and desired level of onboarding. Yeah. Yeah, definitely something that we, that we can see again. Like if you take, if you also take the example of Italy and France when it comes to onboarding, Italy, we nowadays, since the obligation in January 2019, we only have to make one connection. We connect uh, um, SAP via an AS2 channel, SFTP channel to, um, or the three SAP instances from, um, from ACFA to uh, our Comark e invoicing portal, and we connect our Comark e invoicing portal to SDI, and it's done. That's basically the most simple way of onboarding. For us, it's, it's, it works very well as well, because it's only that one connection that we have to make. For countries like France, where there's not, not a real mandate for businesses to use um, e-invoicing, uh, it's quite difficult to, uh, to convince, like the big companies, okay, you can easily convince them that they need e-invoicing because they are currently probably also working on an e-invoicing project. From a, a smaller company perspective, a company that's not able to use technology, also a global vendor or global um, global corporations that are asking them to use their e-invoicing portals um, where they have to log into multiple portals at the same time is also a bit of an issue there. Um, so we can see that in multiple projects. It's not only an, an, an issue that we have uh, in, uh, in ACFA's project when it comes to onboarding the long tail of suppliers or buyers in this case um, uh, from ACFA's side. It's actually also something that I'm interested in um, from an audience perspective. And uh, Alex, if you could publish this poll, is, is what are your biggest challenges in your current e-invoicing project? Um, I, I've actually picked out four or five options that I see uh, most commonly, um, which is which number one, um, also the um, data in NL over the last couple of years has showed this, that onboarding of business partners is one of the biggest issues that there is. Um, the second one is, uh, is something that Peter also mentioned, uh, where it comes to legal compliance from this side is that um, um, you have to follow all these mandatory regulations, especially in Latin America, everything is different. There's no one global mandate or like Latin American mandate that handles all the different formats and handles all the different uh, tax authorities, but you have to have one good partner, whether it's Comark or someone else that can actually handle these legal compliance issues. Um, another point, which is which maybe you don't see that often, is that it's, it's, it could be internal resources, um, uh, especially in this big project. I'm glad to hear from Akfa's side at least they set up a steering committee. They get they got everybody together, but sometimes people really under, underestimate a rollout plan for e-invoicing. They underestimate how many people need to be involved in this. Uh, it's people from IT. It's people from finance. Um, um, and from that point of view, it's, it's, it could be quite, quite difficult to have these internal resources. And the third point of view is change management. And Peter, I actually want to hear your opinion on this because in France, we also, or like you also had some account managers in France that were saying like, hey, maybe this is not the best way, right? Or like, do you have the feeling that you have to explain a lot why we're doing this internally? Uh, definitely. Um, when, when everything runs smoothly, you will not get a lot of comments or, or, or complaints, but of course, when things go, go more difficult, and then especially in, in this onboarding uh, situation, you, you get more yeah, comments from the business as if things are not okay in terms of concept and, and processes. Now, uh, yeah, why? Because this, this relates to invoices, invoices you send to a customer and invoices which are at the end of them not delivered if the onboarding is not completed. Uh, an invoice which is not delivered leads then at the end to, to not being able to cash the invoice 
and automatically you get the, you end up in this this uh, I'm not saying endless, but you you end up in discussions also internally on on okay is this project still the the right way to go? Um, so yeah, that's part of the project, uh, and we are we are ready to continue this uh, this 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 internal discussions where needed. Because I, I still feel and I believe that we have taken the right decision, uh, that we are also on, on in moving in the right direction. And even with, with the changing environment, we should not forget Taiwan, Brazil, a lot of other uh, countries, uh, they, they come into the picture. Uh, we, we have a kind of flexibility uh, and, and we prepare ourselves for, for the future. So, uh, and yes, also with Comarch, we sometimes have discussions on, on do we need to do it like this? Uh, does it need to be solved today? Uh, is it urgent? Is it not urgent? And for me, as we, we embark together in this journey, uh, it, is, it is logic. And, and these are the things we will continue to have every time that we roll in a new country. Uh, but again, this is part of a project. And I feel that still today, we are still able to talk about these things, to escalate uh, issues when, when needed. And at the end, uh, we come with a solution. Uh, and that's the positive story about this. So are we there already? Definitely not. Uh, do we still have a lot of things to do? The, the answer is yes. Um, and uh, are, are we working still together to get to the end state? Also the answer there is yes. Yeah, yeah I totally agree. I think. Uh, uh, thanks a lot for that conclusion, but I think I, I, I agree on the, on the point where you also mentioned the flexibility, right? Brazil coming, uh, coming in, Taiwan coming in. Um, I think three months ago we had India that was uh, mandating it for um, 1st of April, uh, but they moved it due to the corona situation. But um, this is also why Rolla plan for e-invoicing needs to be very flexible. Um, legal requirements are currently changing at a, at a constant rate. Um, Greece has already, uh, they, have, they already have a regulation that has been approved by the parliament, but they haven't put it into place yet. But it can be that they say, for example, from 1st of January, 2021, um, e-invoicing will be mandatory for everyone. Uh, and that is where we also have to think about the, the planning um, um, from this perspective and from MACFA's perspective, is that we have to follow also all the mandatory regulations that are needed. Um, then next to that, of course, every project has a risk of delay, uh, especially projects of these skills. We're talking about a rollout uh, of the invoicing rollout in 44 countries. Um, this doesn't happen overnight. It does, it does kind of happen overnight in, with Italy. One connection, simple onboarding. Um, it's very practical there, so it can be done in a couple of weeks. But for other countries where, for example, e-invoicing is not mandatory, um, and business partners are saying like, hey, we don't really want to, um, we, don't, we are already using two portals for two different uh, corporations. We don't want the third portal there as well. It's really something you have to incorporate into your, uh, the way of communicating when you're talking to your business partners, your clients, your buyers, or, or your suppliers. And um, uh, last but not least, as Peter mentioned, like we also have discussions, we also have issues, we also have escalations, but this is what we should, you should expect. We're, we're, we're working together for the next five to 10 years. So you, it's kind of a marriage, like there will be issues both internal and external. But I think with the stair codes that we have implemented, the talks that we have regularly, we are, we are handling it quite well. Um, and um, from that point of view, um, thanks, uh, thanks again, Peter, for your opportunity to talk about the webinar. And thanks again for um, um, doing this and um, that will be all from uh, Peter and my side when it comes about the business case. Uh, I can see that there has been some questions so I want to move to those. Feel free to type in your question whenever uh, whenever you want to ask me or Peter a question um, and we will go from there. Um, so I will go on and look at some of the questions and I will answer them live. Um, one of them has already been answered, I can see. Um, how would you assess machine-readable PDF in the perspective of EDI processing? A question from Rocco, I think he's from Asa Bloy, the IT manager, as I saw him in his chat. Um, well, machine-readable PDF is still not that accurate. Uh, I mean, you can do it with OCR, uh, but optical character recognition is actually, does not 
um, have a 99% or like 100% accuracy. Uh, actually, for every mis mistake it corrects, it creates another mistake. So you can never be at the full 99 or 100% or 99.9%. .9%. There always has to be some manual interaction. So um, what I always would do is, is still use OCR if you if you receive PDFs because that is the, the best way to approach PDFs at this point. But also try to encourage your um, your suppliers to send you uh, e-invoicing messages. Um, from my perspective, in the Netherlands, um, all bookkeeping software systems, we have around 100 of them. Every sector has a different one. It's kind of crazy, actually. Um, but they are, they are all able to send an e-invoice. Most of the uh, small suppliers actually don't know that this is the case or the bookkeeping system that they have um, can send an e-invoice. So also try to educate or involve your software provider in educating your um, um, your, your supplier um, with leaflets, uh, some some webinars, for example, where they can explain what is the process that is happening and how we are moving forward. I hope that answered your question. Um, from the other perspective, uh, the question was already answered by Jeroen, and this is one that I want to involve Peter in, or by Alexandra, but this is one I want to involve Peter in as well, is um, we've talked about the customer portal, um, and um, Peter, Jeroen is asking us if it's also possible to connect directly to the customer e-invoicing tool. Um, from our perspective, it is possible, from Comar's perspective, um, also, in the customer portal that we have, it is actually possible to, um, to set up an AS2 channel um, yourself as a, as, as a customer. Um, Peter, do you get a lot of these requests from your customers to send them e-invoices? And how do you typically handle these? Well, we, um, the, we, we started uh, by setting as a default that the, the customer needed to uh, retrieve from the portal the PDF invoice, so download the invoice, uh, because that was then for us also a trigger to be sure that the customer received the invoice. Uh, I must say that the majority of our customers are more keen to get an email notification together with uh, an attachment, a PDF attachment, which is then the copy of the invoice rather than, than connecting uh, to, to the, the portal and downloading uh, the invoice. I am sure personally that once we have more and more customers using the portal, that we will see some customers who will ask to connect directly to the data, which is behind the PDF, uh, and to connect that data towards their uh, accounting system. But today, uh, the customers we have today onboarded, uh, they more want to receive a PDF invoice by email, which is then sent via the portal. So that's uh, the experience we have today. Okay, Jeroen, I, I hope that answers your question. Otherwise, feel free to reach out to me uh, via my email address. Uh, another perspective, and this is actually something that you can explain, uh, uh, Peter, rather than me explaining, because I work for Comark, so I will probably be selling Comark as well. But um, Steve's representative from the UK is asking, um, is saying the following, we are being encouraged by our technology group to use ERP, in their case, SAP, solutions for e-invoicing. Um, what does a third party bring over these solutions? What does a third party like Comor bring over these solutions, Peter, in your, from your perspective, instead of using SAP's Ariba? Yeah, well, the, the, the reason why we selected uh, another partner, in this case Comar, uh, was not that uh, we had problems by sending PDF invoices towards a customer, but has more is more connected with the, the compliance issues you we have and would have when governments are forcing us to connect with uh, local platforms in a structured way. And then it was our belief that uh, that ongoing programming out of SAP uh, was too difficult to do it by ourselves or to use SAP as, as the, the, the partner to, to make it happen. Um, we believed that they would not be able to react that fast uh, for this specific domain in, in the SAP platform. And we learned that with Italy, where you have an XML structure uh, and you need to set up a daily connection uh, of, of, of your invoices issued. 
And uh, in order to do that for all the other countries across the globe, we believed that a partner, in this case Comer, would be better placed than SAP as uh, a solution. Thank you for answering that. I hope that answers your question, Steve. Um, moving on to the next question, and then we have one last one, and then we will move forward from that. Um, and this is also one that I um, that I want to involve you a bit in, uh, Peter, when it comes to the onboarding perspective. Um, Arthur from Warsaw is asking, or from Poland, I don't know if he was from Warsaw, but definitely from Poland. In case of sending e-invoices as PDF from SAP directly, what strategy stream source you choose to collect email addresses from the clients? Um, I think in, in ACFA's case, it's the account managers that have access to these email addresses and also um, you have it stored in SAP, correct? Correct, yeah. yeah. In case we, we have a, a PDF chain out of SAP directly, we have a contact. Don't ask me where exactly in SAP it is stored, but the email address, uh, the recipient of the email is stored in SAP and is then getting a copy of uh, each invoice issued to, to that customer. Okay, thank you, Arthur. I hope that answers your question as well. Um, moving on to the next one, and this one I have to understand. Uh, I'm, I'm going to answer it from my perspective and from my understanding. Is when invoices are sent to Comark and from Comark to government portals, how does the customer exactly receive the invoices? Do they check from the government portal, or do they have another vendor transmitting the data from the government portal? Um, from my perspective and from my experience, um, either the government portal is connecting to the client directly, such as in Italy, um, or um, customers are um, uh, handling it with a third, uh, third, third party, uh, another vendor. It could be Comark as well, could be Bosworth, could be anybody else. Um, and um, what I know is that in some countries, um, small local government uh, um, Decentralized public authorities, so as a small municipality, um, they can pick it up from the government portal if they don't have the capable technology to actually get the invoice um, directly into their ERP system or bookkeeping system uh, that is working. Um, in any case, uh, usually it is that the government portal is directly connected to um, another vendor uh, that is being used by, for example, the Ministry of Defense or um, anything like that. And then a question for Peter, because I don't, I think it's cross-border as well, but um, we are currently handling mostly domestic B2B and, and B2G invoices uh, for ACPA. Um, any cross-border in the scope, Peter, at the moment? Uh, what do you mean with cross-border, Nick? From the Netherlands to Belgium, or from Belgium to Germany, or from uh, Belgium. Well, yes, we, we are, we are, for us, we, we, we look at customers uh, depending on where they are located. So the moment that we would start with the customers in the Netherlands or in Germany, uh, all invoices issued to these customers, irrespectively from where they are coming, will become part of this e-invoicing program. So then automatically also cross-border will become part. Uh, of this project. Yeah, and, and, and at the moment right now, the way we probably use it is we'll still use the, um, the customer portal. Also, there is, as far as, uh, as far as I know, there are no regulations in the EU. Um, in, uh, for example, Italy, um, uh, it is not mandatory yet for cross-border invoices uh, to be sent to the tax authority. So those are still handled by the customer portal or any other way. Yes. Um, and uh, if we look at when it will be mandatory for cross-border e-invoicing in the, in the European Union or in Latin America or in the USA, uh, I don't have a really concrete answer to that. Um, for me, it would be kind of complicated uh, and we would need one, one, cent one global central system because from my perspective, if I'm a company in Italy and I have a client in, for example, Asia, China, or in the US or in Brazil, I don't see the Italian tax authority connecting to this client in Brazil. So um, there's quite a complication there when it comes to cross-border uh, e-invoicing in the clearance uh, model way, because 
um, for a model like Italy, it will be quite complicated to handle this. Um, that um, the Italian government will have to connect to, or the Italian tech authority will have to connect to all the clients that you have outside of um, Italy, which is could be more complicated. And then, um, I don't know if these are questions because it's not really a question mark, but um, I will answer them and go ahead. It seems that it's easier to implement e-invoicing when this is mandatory, like in Italy or Spain. Could be, yeah. Um, the clearance models are definitely a bit easier to implement because there's usually one connection. But it could also be that the tax authority is not sending the e-invoice to the buyer and you still have to send the e-invoice to your buyers. Um, where you have to set up two connections. You have to set up one to the tax authority and one to your buyers. Um, the one to your tax authority to send your invoice to and get the approval. And then you have, you still have to forward it to your buyers. So that is still something that is, um, yeah, that, that in some countries it could be easier, like in Italy, where uh, for domestic invoices only, as I just said, um, you send them to SDI and SDI handles everything uh, after that. Um, yeah. So the, it can be easier, it might also not be easier. And then the last comment from Laurent, uh, which I will also comment on, it's a pity to not have an EU standard way of dealing with e-invoicing. As this is costing a lot of money to set it up and to maintain it, Italy live and generated 2019 and upgrade of version in October 2020 already. Um, it is indeed a pity that we don't have a real EU standard way of dealing with e-invoicing. We do have some EU standards, uh, that, like we have a format that is um, uh, that every country has to follow, but they're not really obliging you uh, to follow this format. You just, or like to, to exactly follow this format. Every country can give its own taste of this format, which also resolves into a lot of, um, um, yeah, a lot of different formats again, because the Netherlands is interpreting this format differently than Belgium is, and Germany is also interpreting this differently. And then Sweden comes along and says like, hey, we are going to interpret it differently as well. So then, yeah, yeah you have all kinds of different formats again. Um, so yeah, it is, it is kind of a pity to, to not have an EU standard. I agree. Um, I, I mean, they're talking about it. Some politicians are saying um, service providers shouldn't even exist. We should just have one um one format and one way of exchanging the invoices but um as far as we know this is not in the planning uh to to develop such a tool and um the eu is currently just saying to everybody that every country that they if they want to implement a specific format or a specific way of e invoicing um it's their decision how to how to turn the um the guidelines that the eu is giving into a mandate um so yeah Um, and then the last point from Rocco, and this is one I want to involve you in for Peter as well. Um, maybe you can explain a bit more about this. Um, as Rocco is saying that he is on the buyer's side and he sees a great variety of possibilities in e-invoicing solution. That makes it difficult to make the business case positive. How did ACFA make the, diff the, the business case positive, Peter? But the, the business case positive, if you talk about pure money, um, I do not think we, we speak about a positive business case. Um, what, what are the, the items which are uh, also important to know is that, okay, we save on, on print and, and mail expenses. Uh, still, a lot of invoices were printed to the customer. To, uh, by having it in a digital way, we believe that at the end we get less questions on missing invoices uh, because we have them through the portal, we have them stored, customers can collect them at any time. And uh, also the, uh, uh, the fact that when there is new legislation in a certain country and when we have a partner like Comar who is able to connect and who is promising us that they will be able to connect to different platforms uh, going forward. Well, there the saving is that then we do not need to spend ICS resources in programming uh, connections to these different platforms because we will turn automatically to Comar saying the data is already available on your platform. 
where in the past it was sent to the customer. It is now your role, and that's how we have the partnership defined, to connect now to that uh, governmental platform and map the fields we and the data set provided to you in a way that the government in country X is, is accepting our data. So the business case today is most probably Euro-wise not, not positive, but in the long run, we are sure that this is uh, enabling us to uh, to speed up uh, connections to governments and to be ready for the future. So see it as a kind of an investment in the future as well. In the beginning side of the project, yeah. And afterwards, you will get that return of investment. Um, then I'm done answering this question. We'll have two more questions and then we will uh, probably end it because we're reaching time uh, as we speak. Um, looking on the 40 countries covered by the global project, was there any local legal requirement in any country to have written confirmation from the client to receiving e-invoices or simply no, any written approval is needed? Um, you have in most post-audit countries, you have a need you, you need either verbal or written approval from uh, your buyer to send an e-invoice. Uh, I think in the current countries that we are handling, um, we have France where you need written approval, Italy, of course, where it's just a clearance model, so you have to you have to be mandatory. Any other countries or, 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 or topics you can think about, uh, Peter, where you need the written approval from your order? Uh, no, uh, we, we have heard that comment often uh, that uh, there is a written approval needed. At the same time, we receive sometimes advices uh, saying that once a customer is paying an invoice which was delivered in a certain way, that that also implies that the customer accepts uh, the way that the invoice was delivered to him. Um, so it's a little bit a, a mixed bag, I think. If you follow the, the law black-white, most probably you will need often a written consent uh, up front. Now, having an onboarding procedure where a customer is, is accepting the use of the portal, you can also consider it as a kind of a written consent from a customer. And then, like I mentioned, secondly, if you deliver an invoice through the portal and the customer is paying that invoice, well, then it means that he's in acceptance with the way that we, we deliver the invoice. But that is also something we have to see uh, as we move on today. We don't have the problem. And it is possible that uh, in a certain country, there is a more strict legislation on, on having a written consent up front. Yeah, thanks. OK. Well, that was it from our side. We, oh yeah, we still have two questions left, um, one for Peter and one for, for us. Um, the one one is is customer solution compliant with the latest legal requirements in Portugal, and that's a fairly easy answer. Yes, it is. Um, we are currently handling uh, B two G invoicing for Aqua in Portugal and B two B as well, or so on uh, the roadmap. And then the last one for Peter. To enable e-invoicing for 40 countries, how did you deal with onboarding them to Peppel? Or if not Peppel, what was your connection mode? I think we don't actually have a country where we, where we had to use Peppel at the moment. We are... No, not yet, not yet. We are connecting, you know, we are directly connecting to the government portals at the moment. So yep. in France, we are directly connected to Course Pro. In... Um, Italy, we are directly connected to SDI, so we prefer a direct connection. But if it's not necessary, then we can also use Peppel. Comework is also a certified Peppel access point. So um, if, if it will be uh, needed in this project, then we can help. Uh, then we can help. Thanks. Well, thanks everybody for joining the webinar. Uh, feel free to reach out to me via email if you have any other questions, comments, or um, if, yeah, if you just want to talk. Also, if you want to have contact with Peter, just give me an email and I will um, see if, 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 if Peter is open to have a, a conversation about the Aqua project with a bit more deeper insight from a finance perspective, maybe, et cetera. Um, thanks again for joining. Um, I hope you all have a wonderful day and uh, stay safe.
Okay, thank you. Thank you. Bye.